Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Indigo and I am here bringing you guys just a um, short video of the twin flame relationship as explained by my angels and um, how to get that twin flame relationship that you desire um, back into reunion. I've had a lot of people asking me um, with all the reunions happening and all the portals um, what they can do to bring their twin in. And so that is what this video is going to be about. So um, our twin flames, our twin souls are said to be our perfect match, our perfect vibrational um, mirror in this world. So we unite with our twin flames to experience a soulful transformation, uh, the fulfillment of our, our personal potential in this life to be the best person that we can be and to come here and complete our soul's purpose, our reason for being here on earth. Um, however, unfortunately, connecting with our twin flames can often be excruciatingly painful. It's intense. It's overwhelming. Um, and that's just because it brings up a lot of our, our fears, our wounds, our ego blockages, our, um, all the shadow side of us that we try to hide from, it brings out all the old scars that we have buried deep. It brings up and reopens. And, um, so as a result, every twin flame relationship eventually experiences certain stages. Um, we first have, you know, the coming together of the twin flames. Um, the, connection is intense. It is amazing. It's something you've never felt before. You feel like you've known this person your whole life. Um, you guys have so much in common. You're the perfect match. What is what you think? Um, and then it often escalates awful quickly to the runner chaser dynamic. So, um, this period is very, very both complex and extremely distressing for both partners who really just deep down want to be in union with each other. Um, yeah. So, um, for those of you who are just recently, um, experiencing this, for those of you who are, um, new to this connection, for those of you who are just now figuring out what twin flames are, um, you're probably wondering, all right, what's the runner chaser? So, when we think about twin flame relationships in terms or stages, the runner chaser stage, um, would be the sixth stage of the relationship. Um, it's preceded by a level of just pure, immense inner turmoil as personality differences, egos, and old wounds tend to flare up. Um, and eventually as the tension rises to an explosive level, the only way out is to try to escape the relationship, try to escape the connection in some shape or form. Um, this process of your partner distancing themselves from you or you from them is the runner. Um, it can either be physical or psychological or both. So, um, often running away from the intense love with your twin flame, it involves returning back to an ex partner. Um, uh, spouse that you were planning on leaving for this person. Um, it can include traveling, silent treatments, um, constant argue, arguing, uh, blocking of social media, text messages, um, diving deep into work, or simply just up and leaving for no clear reason without saying a word. Um, yeah, often um, running away from this intense connection with a twin flame relationship, it, it often is done. And the runner has no clear answer why they, they can't tell you why. And that's often why they don't, they don't speak. They don't talk because they know you have questions and you don't have the answers. So in this stage, the runner often represents the more wounded the runner is usually the younger person in the relationship. Um, and then the chaser is obviously the more mature or older soul. So in other words, one person is open to the purifying 
love, intense connection of this relationship, while the other one finds uh, the dissolution of having no boundaries with each other, intimidating and too much to handle. And that's why they run. Um, for, yeah, for a lot of people, a lot of couples, this is very tormenting, um, because you feel so much love for each other, but yet you just feel you can't be together. The, the intense vibration of each other is it like almost repels the one person cause they can't handle the intense intensity of it. Um, some, some couples just fight constantly. They can't stand in the, to be in the same room. Um, you are you and with each other every day for hours. Um, and often too, uh, like the runner chaser roles can often like, switch back and forth as well. So, um, yeah. And if you're in this stage right now, it's completely normal to feel extremely vulnerable, angry, overwhelmed, confused, um, unsure what to do, how to move forward. So, um, I want to share with you, um, six tips that helped me personally get through this stage as well as, um, many people that I have come into contact and got the, uh, opportunity to work with over the last couple of years. So first and most importantly, you are not alone. Um, you are not the only one going through this. There are people out there that are experiencing the exact same thing. So reach out, um, reach out to people, reach out to groups, reach out, you know, find a channel on YouTube that you, um, find comfort in because a lot of times knowing the person is returning is enough to calm you down enough to start doing your inner work. Most importantly though, you want to make sure that this twin flame, um, connection is not confused with a codependent or an emotionally abusive relationship. Um, unfortunately some couples, uh, this could be a very real possibility. So don't confuse arguments or differences in character or insecurity. Um, or more sinister forms of manipulation, control, or abuse confuse you that you're in this journey. Um, but if you are in a twin flame relationship, it will be clear to you. It will be clear that your partner um, and you have a connection like no other. If you're asking, is this my twin flame? There's a possibility it's not because you will know the intense connection when you feel it. Um, it's very important to you to know that your partner is not intending to cause you harm or pain. Um, it's very unintentional. And this is a product of their own unresolved pain. This is a product of what they have to work on themselves. Um, and that's where you can tell a difference too, where um, a lot of times if you are in an abusive relationship, they are clearly trying to hurt you. Um so yeah, just know if you are in this journey, they are not running from you or blocking you because they are wanting to hurt you. They just need distance in order to heal their own hurts um, because you guys reflect them with each other when you guys are together. Um, secondly, think about the triggers that uh, that causes your partner's behaviors. Um, is there certain things, uh, a certain look, a tone in your voice, a phrase, an action Anything that triggers an emotional response within you um, is a trigger. Once you have discovered what triggers uh, what triggers you, you want to ask yourself, why does that bother me so much? Um, try to go as deep as you can. You know, don't don't settle with answers like, well, he thinks he's always right, or she isn't listening to what I have to say. Um, find an emotion that actually triggers you. Like, for instance, um, bitterness, resentment, uh, annoyance. And keep digging deeper with that. It's likely that you'll uncover that many harmful ideals, beliefs, or personal issues are lying beneath those layers of emotion that you cover up with um, excuses from the other person. Like he doesn't ever listen to me or, you know, 
things like that. So, um, so for example, like if you get extremely irritated when your partner interrupts you, ask, why is that? You get upset because he isn't respecting what you're saying enough to stop and listen. Why is that a problem? It's a problem because when he does that, it makes me feel like he doesn't care what I have to say and he doesn't love me enough to listen to how I feel. So then ask yourself, why is that an issue? Well, when I don't feel he loves me, I feel alone and abandoned. So here you can see that the true issue is you feeling alone, unappreciated, the fear of abandonment, all coming from your partner interrupting you. So um, you see how you kind of have to like dig deep, keep going, keep asking yourself why, why? Um, third, learn to openly communicate with your flame. Um, uh, open communication rarely, rarely happens naturally. So it's something that the majority of us have to learn through math and master throughout our lives. Um, so many of us fail to communicate openly and we hide our true emotions out of fear that we're going to offend somebody or push them away. Um, so we keep our thoughts and perspectives to ourselves and we don't speak up when something bothers us. So if something bothers you <clears throat> with your partner, um, make sure that you are speaking your mind, live in the moment. Um, but not only that, spend time alone to reflect within yourself, have, you know, be very mindful of your breathing, uh, be alone with your thoughts and allow them to process because that's going to, um, allow you to communicate them even more. Um, a lot of times your twin flame grew up in different contexts as you, um, grew up with different lifestyles, different life experiences, different genetics, different personalities. Um, so remember that what they think, feel, and believe to be true is not necessarily the same as you. So respect their, um, communication as well. Um, the fifth tip I have to give you is to remember what you are being taught. Everything in life is a lesson. Um, and that's just part of the journey. So whenever you guys um, are arguing or are giving each other the silent treatment, um, take that time to ask yourself, what is my twin flame trying to teach me through his actions right now? What is my twin flame trying to teach me through his words right now? Um, it could be that you need to develop more patience. Um, you need to learn more understanding. You need to learn forgiveness. Um, in the end, our twin flame they, they are just a direct reflection of ourselves and they are teaching us the hardest lessons, the most harshest lessons, the most valuable lessons in our life. So when you open yourself up to learning these lessons, you not only grow as a person, but you in turn self heal and in turn bring them closer to you. Um, and my last, uh, tip for bringing your twin flame into reunion with you is to realize that you each carry your own different types of pain. Every argument and every rash and hurtful decision is a product of unresolved pain that neither one of you have dealt with. So when you both learn to understand this, you can forgive each other and allow the love that you share between the two of you to cleanse your wounds. Forgive each other. For Do not bring the past up. The twin flame journey is ugly sometimes. It is hurtful. It has brought you to your knees in pain. It has made you cry countless days. It has made you question yourself, question your relationship, question your thought process, your feelings, your beliefs. And that's what it's meant to do. But we're only meant to take that lesson that it taught us and take that with us. Do not bring all the pain um, or you're never going to come back into union. Um, it's so important when you're in the runner chaser phase to take the time apart, to really self-reflect, to really go in deep, because if you are not healed, they will not return. They will come back and forth, you know, come in and out of your life just to reflect that pain some more. So you know what to deal with, but until you deal with it the right way, until you deal with it, um, in a way that is going to allow those hurts to heal, will they come back into union? 
You can't trick them into coming back. You can't talk them into coming back. You can't manipulate the situation into them returning to talking to you, just staying. You have to do the work. Um, and that is so important every single day. Do your positive affirmations, do your meditations, do your, um, your healing work, find your spiritual center, and most importantly, give it up to the angels, give it up to the universe, um, allow them to take your pain away and heal. Ask your angels for help. Um, they will help you heal faster. Um, when you realize that you have no control in this situation is when the situation will be controlled to your benefit. Um, when you let go and let God or whoever your creator is, um, when you give it to them and the angels and allow divine timing to work, you are going to find so much more success than you trying to control the situation and um, try to bring them in yourself because it's not going to work. So um, I hope this answers some of your questions. For those of you new to the Twin Flame journey, for those of you who need a refresher, um, who have been in this quite some time, uh, the next six months is amazingly huge for Twin Flame connections and reunions. So do that work. Do that self-healing. Do uh, do give it up to the universe and allow them to do their work. And you just concentrate on healing yourself, putting those scars away. Take those lessons and move forward and your twin it will come back um, quicker than you would think. So... Um, thank you once again for joining me on my channel. As always, I wish you love, light, and may God bless your journey.